Hi everyone, it's Raina. So this video is for those people who have their natal Mars in the 10th house. The 10th house is the house of career. It's your public reputation. So it's kind of um, your calling card to society, what your accomplishments have been, what your status is. This is the house that is ruled by Capricorn and its ruler, Saturn. So those themes that are attached to um, Capricorn and Saturn are present in the 10th house. And Mars is the drive, the will, the, um, the energy, that uh, something that I'm going to use every chance that I get. They say when Mars uh, is in a particular house, it can represent where you pour most of your energy into. So for people who have their natal Mars in this 10th house of career, they could be very focused on their career. And um, you also have to look at the sign of Mars because that, and, uh, another thing too is looking at the aspects that Mars makes to other planets or the other planets make to Mars because that will um, give even more indication of how this is all shaking out. Somebody who has their natal Mars and Pisces in the 10th house may not have all of the, the assuredness that I'm, I'm talking about here, but it can actually strengthen their Mars. Mars is exalted in Capricorn. And so being in the 10th house, this is like having Mars in Capricorn. So it can be a very good placement in a lot of ways. So suffice it to say, this can make a person very ambitious. And if you think about the symbol of Mars, what it looks like is kind of an arrow and a bullseye. Now, I could be totally uh, wrong that that's what it's supposed to be, but that's what it looks like to me. And... So this person who has Mars in this house is going for it. He's going after their dreams. Now you might say, well, isn't that what everybody does? No. Some people have a lot of ambition in their mind and they talk a lot. They talk a good game, but when it comes to implementing things, they're AWOL. And somebody with natal Mars in the 10th house is making it happen. If you have Mars in a cardinal sign like Capricorn, like Cancer, Aries, because that, that would really be something, that would be a dynamo because um, Aries is ruled by Mars. Or in Libra, um, this will increase the uh, ability to initiate and um, and be a doer when it comes to career matters. But, um, and also, if your Mars is in um, a fixed sign, like Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, or Aquarius, you can be quite persistent with your goals, even if you are met with a lot of obstacles. Uh, even if your Mars is... <laughs> is uh, challenged by um, squares oppositions, you may still uh, doggedly pursue your goals. So um, you have a high energy level and this really helps you to accomplish these goals. And there's like a dynamic quality about somebody who has this position. Now, I want to say too that this does not mean that every single person who has this placement is, you know, successful in the worldly sense. One of the things that they said, and this is the time when I give a shout out to advancedastrology.com, which helped me compile this list. One of the things that they said on that site is that if you're not successful at this point, that you probably have not found what is your passion. This is a passionate um, placement. So the person is passionate about achieving their goals. And that is so important because some people are just not ambitious. 
and it's hard for them to be motivated. This type of person is motivated by the accomplishment of their goals. And so that spurs them on to set new goals. And they're always, um, you know, excited about accomplishments. And so obviously, and I, I don't think that this is necessarily um, having to do with money. Because this house, although this is an earth house, is really about success. Uh, of course, uh, one of the things that they mentioned is that ambition can lead to making good money. I paraphrased that, but uh, that was the gist of it that I got from it. And I mean, that stands to reason that if somebody's really uh, goal-oriented and pursuing those goals and enthusiastic about them, that they're going to reap the rewards of that financially. I mean, that makes sense. But um, once you find what you're here to do or what you want to do, then you can be unstoppable. So if you don't feel that you resemble these remarks, don't just think, oh, astrology is bogus. You might have to redirect your efforts. And some people are uh, pursuing goals that have nothing, no, that they have no connection to. And I think I'll bring this up because this may be a big thing. This, the Mars in the 10th can be the dominant parent. So, um, they did not say father, but I would say father because that is what the 10th house represents. However, obviously, in all cases, it will not be this way. But um, sometimes I would say that the person is may have a father or a dominant parent who is like this, who is very pushy themselves. And that has led, in some cases, maybe if your Mars is in Pisces, for instance, for you to be pursuing the wrong thing, because you're trying to please somebody else. And at some point you have to realize that you're not here for them. They, they had their chance to achieve their goals and you have the right to your own goals. And this of course is not that easy to navigate because there's a lot of emotion involved, but it still has to be, um, acknowledged. And then, um, you can let go of that need to seek a parent's approval or fear their wrath because in certain cases, this domi dominant or domineering parent may even be violent, may even have been violent when you were younger. And so you may be intimidated by this person. So it's no surprise that people with this position may clash with authority figures you're probably better off working for yourself in most cases because you're not a team player. You're not somebody who's necessarily cooperative. Um, it's funny because having Mars and Capricorn myself, when they started using that uh, phrase in, you know, want ads or what have you, I just, cr I would always cringe, you know, whenever I would read that because I thought, Team players, what does that mean? Oh, you're just kind of going along to get along. Uh, I always felt like we should be individualistic in pursuing our goals, not trying to just always um, do what other people want, even if we don't agree with it. Um, because sometimes, and this can be true if you're an Aquarius or you have Mars in Aquarius, or, you know, sometimes like a Capricorn or a Pisces person will have a lot of inner plants in, Cap in uh, Aquarius. And you really have, you may have a lot of unique ideas. If Mercury's in Aquarius, for instance, uh, you just, somebody who thinks so much differently, I was going to say think outside the box, but it's such a cliche, but I said it anyway. And um, that can lead you to have ideas that intrigue other people. 
And sometimes they can be quite ahead of their time, these ideas. And it's almost painful to have to acquiesce, to have to give in to other people who are just thinking in a very conventional way that you think, okay, that's fine, but it's not going to have us stand out from the crowd. So you're very self-directed. You don't need people to give you orders. You're perfectly capable of knowing what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And that lends itself to working for oneself. If you do work for yourself, uh, you might choose a career in the military. That's a big one because Mars is the god of war. Um, I would, they didn't say this, but I would even say have a father in the military. Um, and you might be, fall, you know, following in their footsteps. Or at least there's at one point in your life, there's this talk of whether or not you're going to join the military as well. Athlete, there's a, there's a, little, a connection between Mars and sports and competitive. You know, obviously you're a very competitive person. Surgeon engineer or entrepreneur. And of course, those are just some of them. So um, you might have these clashes with authority figures. You don't want to necessarily do what they want to do. I wouldn't say it's a rebel without a cause unless you're very uh, uh, young, immature, or unaware. And that can happen at any age where you're not realizing that you're rebelling against authority wherever you go because you have daddy issues, because you um, were really controlled by that uh, dominant parent. It's important to see how you operate um, because even with competitive behavior, if somebody overdoes it and it's easy for Mars to overdo things, it can, you know, come across to, to, to like, um, you know, running roughshod over others, um, in the quest for ambition and, uh, that sort of thing. Competitive qualities can be toxic. Sometimes, you know, so if you have um, some kind of uh, aspect to Pluto that is challenging, even at a conjunction, but especially with the square and, but no, the conjunction to I, when I say even, I mean, that, that can be very um, ambitious, but um, squares in opposition to, from Mars to Pluto this can be because if you're, if you're Pluto, like if you have a conjunction between Mars and Pluto in the 10th house, um, you, can, you can be very obsessed with success. And that can kind of taint what you're doing. So you have to be very careful with Mars that you don't step on other people's toes if you are a subordinate and you are working for somebody else, that you're not, you know... You're able to be independent, but not defiant, um, and, or, you know, or be assertive, but not aggressive. And uh, if you're working for yourself, and also not be like so competitive that you're willing to do whatever it takes. But also, if you have your own um, business or what have you, that you're not just so trying to promote it that um it it might even um turn people off like you know how sometimes somebody just like pushes their product too much or what have you they're overselling it that kind of thing happens and the person may be very enthusiastic about what they're doing that can be the saving grace actually because Sometimes people, you can tell they're just, you know, being aggressive. Maybe they're getting, com they're on commission and they have to 
you know, they have to do it to make their money. It's understandable, but it can be annoying, you know, when somebody approaches you like that. But if they really believe in what they're selling, that can be one of the greatest sales people in the world. Now, I'm saying salespeople, but especially if that's you, if you're an entrepreneur and you have a certain product, um, you can sell it like hotcakes because you really uh, believe in it and you're very enthusiastic about it. And that is something that I think a lot of people respond well to. Okay, that's what I have for you. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a personal reading, the link is below. I'm at rainandmoonastrology.com. Thanks for listening. Take care. Bye.